so I've been I've been using 3D printers at work to do design and innovation for like eight years, but I actually never owned a 3D printer myself. So I went out and bought the cheapest 3D printer I could find, and I thought I'd bring you along for the ride of unboxing, putting this together, and all those things, and let you let you know if it's any good and if it's worth the money. It's, a, it's obviously a DIY kit, you have to put it together yourself, that's why it's quite cheap. Um, and to be honest, I went for this particular uh, printer because I thought that I would probably want to build my own. And buying this printer is the cheapest way to get all the really expensive parts, which are the motors, the control boards, the lead screws and precision ground shaft. So I thought even if I end up modifying it a lot, that's what I would do if I uh, built my own anyway. But it seems to be quite well packaged. There's loads of bearings here, just going through the parts here. I don't know what these are, but they look made like a polycarbonate. This looks like the bed, which is a heated heated glass bed. Oh, there you go. Exposed wires there. It even comes with some cutters and wires, mains, power. This is this is a part of the frame here. A fan, cooling fan of some sort. USB, some belts, main boards and display. So these are electronics. Uh, lead screws and some uh, guides for the bearings and some more parts. Loads of ties for the cables, one, two, three, four uh, stepper motors. I don't know what's in here, but that's probably the power supply. This looks like the extruder, yep, that's the extruder, with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Then this is probably the cooling fan for next to the extruder, more extruder parts. And I think that's it. That looks like most of it. Right, got my instructions, got a cup of tea. Let's start.
Right, so that's all done, I think, all put together. Took um, took quite a while, I think it was six or seven hours in total. Just an hour or so was peeling the paper out of these uh, laser cut parts. But, you know, other than a few things, it came together uh, more or less well. A lot of people say that these need quite a bit of tweaking and testing and changing. Um, so I'm going to start on that process and I'll let you know what I find. printed over 20 hours with this printer in around 10 models uh, which as far as testing goes is very little um, but still there's some some thoughts there uh, the 10 second review of this printer is that it's very much DIY it's not for everyone at all and it has um, quite a few problems so let's have a closer look at some of the models I've printed and also I'll talk you through some of the issues I've had so that you can get a better idea if this is for you or not this is just a model that came with it um, and I was quite um, I was quite impressed with the quality really because this was the very first print that I've done um, and it's not too bad. Then I printed this uh, Chinese chess piece I think it is this is another model this is another model that was um, it was already there and again didn't seem to have a lot of trouble printing it. Um, this to detail is not amazing on the letters but you know it's quite a small piece. Then I printed that um, filament guide that you've seen on the previous segment uh, and I designed that myself and actually that was the first part I've printed that I've, uh, that I've designed so that, was, that, that one turned out pretty well. Um, and then I printed this one which you've seen uh, in, a, in the uncollapsible video um, and that seemed to work okay. This one had a raft or a sacrificial piece of material underneath, um, tried that and it worked okay to secure the piece uh, but it, it leaves some, um, some heart to take off. Uh, straggly bits here, so I've, I've decided to not print uh, with rafts afterwards. But it did its job, and the surface finish is is okay. It's not too bad. Also, these weren't printed separately; they were printed as is and came as one big chunk. So after after I took them off the printer, I had to kind of I had to kind of like break them like that. Um, so that's quite interesting how you can how you can still separate them afterwards. Then I printed an actual useful part. This is the bottom plate of the paraglider controller. And again, we have that a little bit rough surface finish uh, on the bottom because of the tape. But all in all, it worked pretty well. The, mo the thing that I was most interested in is how straight it would be and if the corners would peel off or anything like that. Um, but it seemed, as far as, as far as that's concerned, um, seems pretty straight to me. So uh, I, was quite, uh, I was quite happy with that. And at this point, I was feeling quite hopeful um, about this printer. So these were these were all only small parts. So then I decided to print a big part to see how well it would print over a large area. So like a big flat part. And then obviously I need to test the uh, the height. So then I printed this thing, which is um, which is just a spacer for the spool to um, to to rotate easier on the on the holder. Uh, and I was really impressed with how this turned out. Uh, but when I took it off the build plate, I realized that the back side had quite a lot of these. Uh, I don't know what they call layer shifts or something. This is, you know, it's, it's flaky stuff. Uh, and actually, it wasn't that good. However, I was quite impressed that the way I model this is basically a one millimeter thin wall on the inside, and the same on the outside. It has a lip here, but the actual this actual wall is actually one mil. And then I don't know if you can see has very small. You can see them. You can see them in there. Very small triangular shape. 
very small triangular shaped members holding it holding it in place kind of like spokes in a bicycle and i just wanted to test how it could resolve those little little tiny details in there then i printed a benchy just for the hell of it and obviously the chimney didn't work particularly well but um well, again, I was quite surprised overall. The text on the bottom didn't come out too well because, again, we were on the tape straight on the aluminium. But uh, apart from apart from a little bit of layer shifting halfway through, everything is quite smooth. The uh, all the all the circles in general in overhangs came out quite well. That's uh, that's pretty round. Um, again, it didn't like this thing and it didn't like that thing. But uh, you can see on the windows, it's not too bad. These are these are actually quite good. I was quite impressed at these two. Uh, and over the front here is a straight overhang. So when that was trying to build a cross, I was uh, holding my breath there. But uh, I don't know if you can see, it turned out surprisingly straight. Um, so, so yeah, I was quite happy with that. So then after that, I started printing with the glass bed uh, and that um, has a few problems so far. I'm not being able to get it to stick properly, but you can see on this particular part, the surface finish over the glass is way better than the than the tape than the masking tape. However, halfway through printing this, uh, it got dislodged and it made a big rat's nest. So that was a failed attempt there. Um, and then I used some more spray and printed this. And again, there's loads and loads of errors on this. Um, it's a interesting looking shape, but uh, you can probably see here that. And this is not because of the bed; it's just because I used the wrong settings on the infill. It's very light, very lightly filled. Um, and it's solid, well, it's supposed to be solid on this side, and it's a skeleton on this side. I don't know if you can tell what this looks like, <laughs> but this is uh, a little uh, little hint for an upcoming project. And again, got really good uh, definition, really smooth surface on the bottom, but then it got dislodged and it didn't manage to finish the print. And yeah, it was rattling, uh, it was it was rattling all over the place, as you could see from the, uh, in the video. So, so anyway, that's where I got to so far. Um, there's definitely some problems that are. Um, problems of the printer and other ones that are just learning curve. So I've done the wrong thing, especially on these two things. Layer height is too high and probably too thin to hold onto the bed. I probably need a raft or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the general feedback. So there you go. That's a work in progress. I'll now be able to print my own parts for projects coming up um, and that will be, uh, be quite useful. If this is for you or not, I would expect it not to be for the majority of you. But I've, I find it fun to figure these things out and learn something in the process. I really want to thank my Patreon supporters. It really helps. And if you enjoy these videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you very soon with some really cool projects that we've been working on for a long time. And I'm really excited to share them with you. See you later. Bye.